if you have $450 in your pocket, in your wallet or whatever, that you want to spend and they are like itching and you, you feel like you just need to spend them. And you think that a Go XLR is the perfect choice for you, for your stream, that will increase your production value. And you would be perfectly right. Go ahead, by all means, go buy it. This video is not to replace it if you can afford it and you think it's worth it. But if you are more like, like the rest of us, probably you don't have $450 to spare. Or you maybe have the money but thinking, should I buy an Go XLR or uh, should I buy a graphics card or should I buy a hot tub? Yeah, well, then I think this video is just about perfect for you. I think you should watch this video, you should try it out and perhaps at the end of the day you have saved about $430. That's not too bad actually. If I save $430 every day, I would be quite rich. But first, my name is Zach and if you think this video is useful for you at all, please consider subscribing and hit that beautiful thumbs up button. It helps a lot and I really appreciate it. Also, I do stream on Twitch every Tuesday, every Thursday, um, or at least I used to do that. I'm, I'm a father since a week or so, so the, the schedule is a little bit shaky. Alright, so let's get to it. So I think that you can pretty much replace the uh, Go XLR with a few different software, maybe a hardware depending on if you have it or not, and you will actually only spend $12.99. So the thing that I'm using is called Voice Meter, and uh, Voice Meter is a software that you have on your computer that works like a virtual mixer. It comes in different varieties. Uh, you have the Voice Meter, Voice Meter Banana, and finally the Voice Meter Potato. I use the Voice Meter Banana because uh, that the, the only difference between them, uh, or uh, yeah, there are actually more differences. They have different number of inputs and virtual inputs and outputs, virtual outputs. And we will get into that in just a minute. For me, Banana is the version that has just about the right number of input output. And that's why I love it. The potato version has far too many. I don't, wouldn't use them all, at least not at the moment. The uh, like voice meter, I think that's then you don't. I think it's useless basically. Uh, if you use the basic version, you don't need that one. So just just ignore that. The very nice thing about voice meter is that it's free. You can download it, you can install it, and you try it out. And if you want to do them happy, the dudes that actually have it, you. You donate. You donate whatever you think is enough or fair. I don't advocate this solution because I get paid for it, because this is a sponsored video or anything. It's not. I don't earn anything of this. I gain no revenue at all. There are no fancy links in the description that you can click and magically I earn a lot of money. There are links in the description, both to my Twitch and to, to this software. But uh, yeah, as I said, I don't gain any money from you clicking on them, promise. So this is Voice Meter Banana on my gaming PC. And uh, as you see, there are, yeah, it comes with the territory. It's a freeware, donateware, I think it's called actually. And uh, of course the, the UI, the user interface is going to be a bit suffering for that. It, it is not that bad, but it makes my eyes bleed a little bit. Anyway. So basically here on the left, on the left side, we have three hardware inputs and uh, in this case I have my uh, mic, I have my streaming PC and you, you don't need to do that. We'll get into that later but this works fine if you do one PC setup or if you have dual PC setup, that's no worries. The third hardware input I don't have actually, but then I have a desktop, uh, which is basically all kinds of noise from my computer as the first virtual input, and I have Discord as a second input. Finally, 
I have the outputs where I have uh, the speaker as the uh, first output, the hardware output by the way. Uh, as a second output I have the Elgato HD60 that I use for, for uh, to get in touch with my streaming computer. Finally I have the virtual outputs which I can use for instance when I, when I rec uh, record with Nvidia which use the default output and by setting a virtual output as the default output I can fool Nvidia to record whatever I want which is quite nice so I can record when I play games and I can get only the gameplay I don't have to mix it up with discord I don't have to mix it up with my microphone and so on I can put that as a separate track in Nvidia uh, the Nvidia shield uh, settings but the, the actual output is still fresh it is filtered it's I have a lot of control. There are a couple of different things that you can do if you click around here a little bit. You can set, a, uh, you can put a limiter. Of course, change the volumes with the faders, and you can change where it should go. You have a noise gate. Yeah, a bunch of different things. And if you look at the outputs, you can actually have a full nice uh, equalizer on on each of them. So very nice functionality actually. When once you get into like the a bit ugliness of it. I'm not going to go through exactly how you set it up. There are a bunch of different tutorials there uh, out there and they have a very nice tutorial like a manual that you can read and they recommend that you read it before you install it. If you are interested of it just let me know in the comments and I can actually do it but uh, for now we will pass on that one. I just want to mention that I use a dual PC as, uh, as I said before. That means that I have a gaming computer and I don't want the streaming to affect the gaming. To be honest, it's because my gaming computer isn't good enough. And then I have a streaming PC, PC that is doing all the like streaming stuff and things. And actually, both the microphone and the, the uh, streaming PC inputs are coming from the streaming PC. And I tried to do this uh, by having a long wire analog and that picked up a lot of noise. I didn't like it at all. And here comes one of those like really nice thing about voice meter because it enables you to send audio between the different computers using the, the network. In this case you see the bluish V band and if I click it I get a whole bunch of different things. Basically what it says is uh, I get the mic in and I get the streaming PC in and yeah what channels where they should go and so on and so forth. Nice setup actually. And also while at it, when you start up, this is called hardware input 1, 2, 3 and you have a virtual input 1 and 2, I think it's called. Just right click and then you can write whatever name you, you like. Very nice and it makes it a whole lot easier to keep track of whatever each input is. I mentioned before there are two different things where I think this is inferior compared to the Go XLR. I mean Go XLR obviously has a bunch of different things that are great but uh, I think there are two issues. Yeah two issues is a good name to say. The first one is that uh, this is software obviously there are no XLR input because of this. Installing this on your computer won't magically make your XLR microphone work. If you have an XLR micro microphone, you still need to buy an XLR in and yeah, you can probably do that for $100 or something like that. Still, you save about $300, which I think is $300, $330, that's nice. The other part is that Go XLR has these nice faders. And I mean, faders are so nice beautiful smooth it's almost like someone petting on you yeah apart from that they're actually quite useful as well because you can control as many channels as you have fingers so basically what you do if you want to lower all at once you place one finger at each and you just drag them down obviously you can't do that here because if you use the mouse and then you move one down and oh yeah next down and so on so forth you can't do it at the same time and that's a problem, at least for many people, and I, I think it is uh, actually for me as well. So the solution for that is actually using another software, Touch Portal, that is free, but I, you should really, and that's where it is, $12.99. You should buy the pro version of Touch Portal, because if you use the freeware, it is but ugly, and you can't use plugins. 
So what we want to do is that we buy the pro version, $12.99, that's cheaper than your game, come on, you should pay it, just get it there. Then we download the plugin for voice meter and we add a page for voice meter. And you can either do this yourself or you can download something that's ready from start. This is one of the examples where you, you have like a nice, that you can have on your iPad for instance. And in this case you can just use the, the different buttons here and you can do all the nice things. There are not, uh, in this version at least, it's not actually faders, it's still buttons, but you can click multiple buttons at once, so th that works. That actually works. By using a thing like Touch Portal, you can actually replace your streaming deck as well, or, or rather you don't need to buy it. You, you get it anyway. So that's actually it. That is my advice. Before you start throwing money on the GoXLR, Unless you are really, really certain that GoXLR is the thing that you need, try this out first. It is free to try. Uh, it costs less than your average game if you want to buy the Touch Portal Pro. Check it out, see if it gives what you need. And if it does, you can save that money for something else that is more useful for you. Or you can be pretty sure that GoXLR really is what, it, what you actually want or need. Ta-da!